Opinions expressed during the sponsored programs on this station are strictly those of the program hosts, guests, and callers and are not necessarily those of Beasley Broadcast Group, this station, its staff, other advertisers, or agencies. You have just entered the building with your boys, King and Sane. Welcome to Shop Talk and Random Ish, where conversation rules the nation and no topic is off limits. You know, this ain't nothing but healthy conversation. Now, welcome your hosts, Rick King and Will Sam. Will, you just ain't going to do your part, huh? America, worldwide internet. Thank you for tuning in to WWE 1100 AM, The Real. I am Will Sam. It's your boy, Rick King. I am in the building. I'm not behind the glass. I'm not on the boards, but I am here and we okay i see you on camera boy i see you on camera what boy, boy am i looking good boy i got my lease you, you see me boy got my georgia boy, hat on I huh i ain't gonna say you looking good but i see you damn you will <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem with men we, we can get we can pay each other a compliment every now and then it'll be okay you could you could have <laughs> well, told me i was know. looking good will it was okay it would have been okay i wouldn't have thought you would know it... no pete no no if you hadn't called me said rick hey you looking good tonight not bad, brother. But I'll let another man come to you. What's good with you, my brother? Hey, oh, hold on. We're going to, we going to, I was told we got to be more. <clears throat> the lovely starlight is not in the building tonight, Um, but we are doing whatever we do. Is it my turn to do my thing? Will? It's your time to do your thing. Oh, brother? okay. Well, y'all know what this is. They never some good old fashioned barbershop style conversation. And this is in barbershop. No conversation is taboo. We ain't got but one rule and one rule only. Will, what is that rule? That rule is say what you mean, mean what you say, just don't mean 
You mean when you say it? What you say? Hey, the call up to the show. Wait, 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 wait. wait. What the uh, hell is you drinking? I was drinking earlier, man, and that's probably why. I, that's probably why I'm not up there tonight. I mean, I need I you like to say that. I need damn car keys. I mean, I need you to say that again, cause they didn't understand nothing you just said. Well, my bad. Okay, we, we only have one rule <laughs> on this show, which is say what you mean. Hey, I can't even say it right now, Rick. I say what you mean, mean what you say. Just don't be mean when you say it. When you want to call it a folk, please call us at 404-603-8770. And if you're in your mammy, baby, Rick, tell them what that is. Y'all know it ain't that mama. <laughs> it ain't now. It's not one of them nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Mama, it ain't one of them not freaky deaky number. It's definitely not gonna get freaky deaky tonight. All these damn men in there. <laughs> it sure ain't gonna get freaky deaky in the barbershop tonight. But please, Mama, t- let Mama know the phone call is on us. She can holler at you. Can holler at us on one triple eight nine two six seven five six two. You can also find us right now on Facebook Live. That's talking random ish. T A L K, the comma at the top. I was told that was a what they call grid apostrophe. Apostrophe. <laughs> I told I was told that is a part. That's T A L K apostrophe in random ish. Follow us right now. You can also find us on Apple Podcasts. You can also find us on Google Podcasts. You can also find us on Spotify Podcast. And I got some notification the other day that said we was on somebody else's podcast. Please like, subscribe. Haters, I'm talking to you. Haters, I need all the haters I can get. We looking for the haters. Haters, haters, haters. We looking for your haters. People, if you love us, holler at your folk. But y'all know what? The shop is now open. Hey, 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 hey. Will. Guess what we got in the house tonight? <laughs> we got a little, got we got a little light skinned young fella in the house tonight. A little light skinned young fella in the house. You got a little light skinned young fella in the house tonight. Well, light skinned, <laughs> what good? What you buy? What's going on, everybody? If you're on the board What's going tonight? on? Light skinned yes, on the boys. Yes, sir, I had to be here for it. You know what I'm saying? This is a very important topic to uh, discuss, and um, you know, I'm just grateful to be here with y'all, OGs, man. Hey, Will. Old school. Love, bro. Welcome in. Welcome oh, all back, love, bro. man. All love. Thank you for having me. Hey, man, I'm glad to see him. I almost didn't know who he was, man. <laughs> he ain't have on his daddy chain tonight. Hey, I almost go. didn't know who he was. Here he go. Hey. Hey, he looking dapper now. Look oh, 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 oh he's suave now. <laughs> hey, he got on the fresh do the right thing sweatshirt now. Yeah, I ain't going to lie to you. He got to. on a sweat, fresh do the right thing sweatshirt. I had to. So so he went back to his daddy arrow. Oh, uh, here we go. But he didn't steal his daddy's shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But he good. But yeah, man. Hey, hey, Will. We got we got family yes, in the yes, building. Sir. Yes, sir. We, we got family in the building tonight. Some kind of way we found Todd. I don't know how we the hell we found Todd. But we found Todd. Hey, to- you drag Todd in? Well, I, hey, bro, you drag Todd in? Bro. Todd, what's good? What's up? What's good, man? I've been I, I've been texting Todd for the last three days. Did to tell him hey. The last three hours. What's oh, up? Well, uh, I just want to tell you hey. You what you want, man? You didn't forget and call me about yeah. eighteen million times. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure. But, hey, Todd really been treating me like I'm his old girlfriend. Oh wow. Yeah, he has. Yeah, he has. Todd like we don't pay him his uh lawyer salary fee per hour. That's hey, what it is. hey, he put us on retainer. We'll get it. <laughs> we'll get it. Hey, but we also got um uh, the other family in the house. We got um uh, the Black Republican is in the house. My man running for sheriff of the Cab County, Harold Dennis is in the building. What's going on with you, my brother? brother? Hanging in there, Will. How are you, sir? Great, great. Welcome back. Thank you, sir. And, and we got uh well car shit. Hey, Will. What's going on, sir? <laughs> Good. To come back uh, on this topic. Hey man, normally, hey, we gonna go through them. Ask everybody how y'all, how y'all doing? How y'all everybody doing? We got to get to it. We got to get to it. Um, tonight, I'm gonna tell you what I initially, what this conversation was supposed to be about tonight. I was supposed to come in here and um, divorce the Falcons. 
That's what I was supposed to do tonight. I was supposed to come in here and divorce the Falcons at least till they get rid of Dan Win- Dan Quinn and his whole coaching staff. That's technically what I was supposed to do tonight. But last week, a lot of things happened. Well, you know that's bad, boy. That's bad. I I, I sent I sent your boy. Uh, Man, you, we gonna cut your mic off early. We we don't want to hear about what the picture you sent me. Greg, what you smiling for? You know why? Greg, are you a fan too? Yep. You 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 know why? Hey hey, we gonna cut hey, Greg. I could, I we gonna cut worse. We gonna cut Greg mic off too here nope, in a minute. Can't do it. Okay. Well, why we can't? Well, okay, we old, got old school is busy right now. He can't cut off my mic. Oh well. Sh- Ish, but um, tonight um, like I said, we were I I had all plans on for an hour and a half to talk about how much I was divorcing the Atlanta Falcons, but some things happened this past week, the past two weeks really. Um, I think maybe two weeks ago, Brianna Taylor family was awarded twelve million dollars, and then last week. One of the officers was indicted, but it was not for the mur- well for the death of Breonna Taylor. I'm, I'm, tonight, yes, I'm going to be cautious with the words that I use. My co-host has let me know, and I have witnessed that we are a very emotion. We are very emotional, especially when it comes to Breonna Taylor. So tonight I'm going to try to use my words as cautious as I can because tonight I'm trying to put out information. Hence, the reason why we have Attorney Todd Wooten in the building. Hence, that's why we have retired Sheriff Carl in the building. Hence, that's why we have former Sheriff running for the sheriff of DeKalb County, Harold Dennis, in the building tonight. We are trying to get information. We're trying to get information because my people are so emotional right now. We are high strong, we are very emotional, and we're ready to knock ish down. But I want to make sure that we're doing this correctly. I want to make sure that we're doing this responsibly. I want to make sure that we're doing this with all the proper information that we have. I want, and and, and Will, Will, you there? That's him calling right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm here, bro. Okay, yes, him. I am here. Will, you are so important to me, not only because you're the co-host of the show, but you kind of keep, you keep me grounded. Because I am the epitome of what black is in America, I guess. And what I mean by that, I get passionate, I get emotional, but I think I think that I do some rational thinking. But you help me to think rationally. And you do I, that. I, I, Go ahead. <laughs> by arguing with you, I make you think rationally. <laughs> yes, because you come from that other side that we need. It, it may be, I mean, because I, I make you curse me out. Is that 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 gets you to start thinking rationally? <laughs> well, yeah, I guess that's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> you you <laughs> because you you have a you 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 try to take emotion out of what you do. Yeah, a lot of people see what you say is harmful but i don't see it harmful because i think you are a very rational person i think what you try to do is take the emotion out of the answer to the riddle now and and, and, and let me let me say something about that because i I want people to understand that even if my my ideas my thoughts are not the norm i try to I try to think before I just go off of my feelings because my first, my feelings are that of a black man first. My first instinct is us again. We're being attacked again. Harm is to us. Harm is to our community. That's my first thought, always. 
but then I have to take my emotions out before I respond because I know that in the past I have jumped to conclusions. I have attacked people. I've attacked loved ones and friends before I've gathered all the the facts and detail. And I feel that uh, with, because I have this platform, I feel that it is incumbent upon me to actually do my research before I give my take or give my feel or give my take or give my opinion on any matter. So I try not to think emotionally or speak emotionally whenever any of this happens. And I just try to keep it to the facts. And that's why I just try to say that. But I do believe that people tend to believe, think or feel that that means he's a sellout, he's an Uncle Tom, or he's against us. No, I don't want us to jump to conclusions without gathering all the details first. And I must be honest. A lot of times when I've seen people that do that, I I have thought that they not exactly Uncle Tom because I know what Uncle Tom who Uncle Tom was, but I sometimes have thought that those people are not for us. But I do know that you are for us. I like to say that me and you are trying to get to the same place, but we're taking two totally different routes to get there. Cool. That's what I like to say. So tonight, we are here to get information pertaining this Breonna Taylor's case. Um, you're going to hear words like we're we going to talk about the no-knock warrants as opposed to regular warrants. We're going to talk about some decisions that we've heard that's been made. We gonna t we we gonna try to make this so that everybody can understand to the best of the abilities that is in this room tonight to make a better decision than what we have because right now it's chaos. It's chaos, and 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 for I don't I don't I don't know if it's good chaos or bad chaos, but that's why we have the gentleman that we have right here tonight. Um, let's do it. Will, are you going to start off with the first question, or do you want me to start off with my three questions well, so I can put them out there? Well, I, I want to start off with, okay, so what we know about that. Um, so from doing, from, from research, from looking at videos article, and reading articles, what I do know about the Breonna Taylor case is that on the day, I believe, I think she was killed March 13th, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so the day prior, five warrants were issued in the Louisville, Kentucky area. All right. So three of them were on one street. One was on another street. And the fifth warrant was at Brianna's address. So there is wrong information out there, or misguided information that says that the warrant they didn't have a warrant for her address. Yes, there was a warrant for her address. I think that's the first thing that everyone needs to understand. There was an actual warrant for her address. Now, they were supposedly looking for Brianna's ex-boyfriend. That's who they were looking for. Now, there's, there's, there's uh, word out there that, hey, he was already in jail. He was in custody. Yes, but he was arrested minutes before Brianna Taylor's house door was kicked in. So I think that needs to be established as well. So it's not like this guy was already in jail like four or five hours ago or something, or four or, four or five days or three days. He had just been arrested like minutes prior to uh, the kicking in of Brianna's uh, door. Um, now... We all know about the no-knock warrant. The no-knock warrant is or was a legal warrant in the state of Kentucky. So I know everyone's saying, well, there was an illegal no-knock warrant or an illegal, uh, yeah, no-knock warrant. It, that's not true. There was a legal warrant. It was signed by a judge. There is, there is, um, there is back and forth going about was it a valid reason for them to obtain that warrant. 
The police officers obtained that warrant off of uh, an understanding that Brianna had dealt with the guy, her ex-boyfriend, whom they were looking at, looking for. They understood that he had used Brianna's uh, address as late as February. Now, this was March. They say that he had used her address as late as February. They have a recording of her speaking to him in January when he was in jail. So they were trying to tie her to him, and they was trying to get this guy. That's why they went to that address. Uh, so I think all that needs to be established. I will also say that, from my understanding, even in in Kentucky, you have a no knock warrant. The no knock warrant will let uh, is, is um excuse me, uh, Todd. Could you tell us about the no knock warrant? What is a no knock warrant? Okay, uh, in, in general, no, when... no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Full, full Todd answers. I got it off Wikipedia. Yeah, I, I, let's let's give him the let's give him the attorney. Let's get the attorney. Let's let the attorney go on this one, Rick. Okay, go ahead. That's why we got the attorney in. I, not to cut you off. No, no, no. I, didn't, but, no, I, I agree with you. Out. That's why. That's why. I mean, that's why I two of us. Because I, I want to print it off the note because I wanted to get a blanket. You know what I'm saying? A kind of blanket definition. I think that's what Wikipedia kind of give you, like a blanket. But gotcha. well, in in general, let's talk about warrants in general. There are arrest warrants, and then there are search warrants. Uh, those that are general too. Mm -hmm. Now, no knock warrant is usually for officer safety. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no if ands or buts about that or whatever. It, it was a uh, legal creation or whatever, because officers sometimes know that they're going into dangerous situations. They don't want to put their lives at risk or whatever. So, announcing to the police and you're going to, and, and as soon as they've got some background on the person that they're going to. Mm -hmm. Now, again, I, I don't know what the boyfriend's background was, but if they're like. You know, if there's some issues of him being arrested for assault, having weapons, uh, that he's selling drugs, sometimes if they're associating drug dealers with having, you know, automatic weapons, AK-47s, uh, you know, AR-15s or, or guns in general, whatever, because of the nature of what they do. And so the officers don't want to put their lives at risk. So they ask for a no-knock warrant, which means we don't have to announce our presence. We can basically go in, and they're usually going to execute these warrants at weird hours. They're not going to do it at 5 o'clock in the afternoon or, or at noon. They really want the people to sort of be relaxed, possibly asleep, off guard or whatever, because they don't want them to be able to access any weapons that may present some harm to the officers. No, no, no. no yeah, yes, yes, yes. Todd, now we got two, like I said, we got two sheriffs, ex-sheriffs in the building. Um, Can we get a definition from y'all? All right. Um, Mr. Todd was correct, but also what we need to, to I want to clarify one thing. Also, the no not warrant was also established for the reason to um, pertain, um, to keep evidence on hand. Um, the no not warrant was established so the officers could enter the residence unannounced to get evidence, usually drugs, because normally if someone know the drug dealers know we're coming, um, they try to destroy the drugs or whatever evidence they have. That was the second reason the no-not warrant was um, established. That's okay. true. I, okay. I, I oh, hold on, hold on. Before we answer any more questions, let, let's go ahead and go to break. Let's go ahead and get this station ID, the little music break out the way, because I just want to be able to make sure we can have conversation with no interruption because we need this tonight. Is that good? Is that good with you, Will? You know what's good with me, brother. We got. Oh, is it good with the radio station? What you talking? No, about? no, no, no. We, we, we no, no. <laughs> yeah, I, the only reason I said it because we in perfect bro. time. We can I run the break. break. We can run the station ID. We in time. So let's do that. Let's run the break, and when we come from break, we gonna we gonna answer the questions about the whole no knock warrant as opposed to the regular not because I got three I got three questions that I won't answer. And so when we come back, we are gonna try to figure it out because I think the question the three questions that I won't answer will kind of help. Black folks. Let's go to break. We will be right black. You can holler at us at 404 You can holler, find us on Talking Random Ish at Facebook. That's the best place to find us right now. Talking Random Ish. That's T A L K apostrophe or comma at the top in Random Ish. We will be right black. www. 
The opinions expressed during the sponsored programs on this station are strictly those of the program hosts, guests, and callers and are not necessarily those of Beasley Broadcast Group, this station, its staff, other advertisers, or agencies. Ain't nobody It ain't no tomorrow, fuck the world The world is ended, I'm done pretending And fuck you if you get offended I feel like friends been overrated I feel like the family been faking I feel like the feelings are changing Feel like my thought of compromise is jaded Feel like you wanna screw and that's how I made it Feel like I ain't feeling you all Feel like removing myself, no feelings involved I feel for you, I've been in the field for you It's real for you, right? But this shit I feel like Ain't nobody praying for me Ain't nobody praying for me Ain't nobody praying for me. Ain't nobody praying. I feel been out of pocket. I feel tapping their pockets. I feel like debating on who the greatest can stop it. I am legend. I feel like all of y'all is peasants. I feel like all of y'all is desperate. I feel like all it takes is a second to feel like. Mike Jordan whenever holding a real mic I ain't feeling your presence Feel like I'ma learn you a lesson Feel like only me and the music though I feel like your feeling ain't mutual I feel like the enemy you should know Feel like the feeling of no hope The feeling of bad dope A quarter house manipulated from soap The feeling, the feeling of false freedom A false freedom to poison To fill them up in the prison I feel like it's just me, look I feel like I can't breathe, look I feel like I can't sleep, look I feel heartless, often, often Feeling the falling, I'm falling apart With darkest hours lost in Feeling the void of being employed with balling Street is talking, filling the blanks with coffins, fill up the banks with dollars, fill up the graves with fathers, fill up the babies with bitch, you in their blogs and pulpit, fill them with gossip, I feel like this gotta be the feeling where Pac was, the feeling of an apocalypse happening but nothing is awkward, the feeling won't prosper, the feeling is toxic, I feel like I'm boxing, demons, monsters, false prophets, scheming, sponsors, industry promises, acts like arrogant, arms and ships and Compton, church, religion, token, blacks and bondage, lost and visits, subpoena, served in concert, oh, your feelings, I mean this for imposters, I can feel it, the phoenix, sure the I can feel it, the dream is more than process I can build a regime that forms a likeness I can feel it, the scream that haunts our logic I feel like say so, I feel like take some I feel like skating on, I feel like wait for Maybe it's too late for him. I feel like the whole world want me to pray for him, But who the fuck's praying for me? Black, welcome black, welcome black, welcome black, welcome black to Barbershop talking random ish with your boys. King is saying, I am Rick Kane. I am Will Kane. Hey, but hey, um, the lovely starlight is not in the building with us this evening, um, but we are having a very important conversation. Um, before we went to break, I guess I was going to start my three questions. Huh? The first question um, is. The no, because we heard a lot about this no knock warrant, as as opposed to a regular a regular warrant. The no knock warrant was basically put in, from my understanding. Correct me if I'm wrong. Was put in place to so that the perpetrator would not be able to hide evidence, 
not be able to get have not have the ability to get rid of stuff that's needed for this case. Right. Preserve sure. evidence. Preserve evidence. Right, but you're saying a no knock warrant. There are two different ones. It's a no knock <laughs> search warrant, and there's a no knock arrest warrant. Two mm. different. The no knock arrest warrant is like um, the attorney stated earlier. You know, we've known that he's a an aggressive, violent individual uh -huh. that perhaps have a weapon. And so if we have a no-knock arrest warrant, we're going to secure a arrest warrant to go get that body. A no-knock search warrant is what also... Um, a narcotics team would use, what we but use when they're go looking for drugs narcotics. Okay. or weapons. or Okay. Now, my first question would be, whatever type no-knock warrant, um, is the person that seeks this warrant are they the same person that execute the warrant and if they are and this is the not the right location are they responsible for this death okay let me let me answer that uh, the person that obtained the warrant normally normally and supposed to be in in DeKalb County they are usually there to execute that warrant also because they have firsthand knowledge of what they had to testify on um, to the judge to, to get the warrant, to obtain the warrant. We have to go in front of a judge and tell the judge all our evidence to obtain that warrant. So normally that person is there. Okay. Now, there is some circumstances, but for all intents and purposes, that person or his counterpart who's working on that case with him somebody's there who have first-hand knowledge so if they so if it's if they going into the wrong place if they're going into the wrong house if Breonna Taylor's place was wrong who who is who does that responsibility rely on I see where you're going with it um, Mobley will probably agree, me, agree with me once I say it. Um, as long as the officer has sufficient, sufficient evidence to go to the judge to secure the warrant and not, you know, there's no fictitious information that's given out, then if the officer perhaps goes to the wrong location, they're <laughs> covered under the color of law because they're acting as the information that was given to them was true, accurate, and true. So, therefore, who does it fall on as far as the officer-wise? That officer would probably be more than likely protected under the color of law because he's doing his job under the color of law. Okay. Uh, l l let me state something ahead, here. Uh, what I was going to say is there are a lot of layers to this. Correct. And there is not going to be one answer that's going to cover everything mm -hmm. because, again, um, what um, – Mr. Dennis is talking about or whatever it is when he says color of law. There are immunity statutes that protect police officers, civil servants, and and uh, politicians and everything like that. So sometimes the mistake that an officer makes or whatever is not the same as a mistake that I might make because of what they do. And, and, and again, right, wrong, or indifferent, the legislature wants to have some assurance or whatever that they're not going to be sued every time right. that they pulled over the wrong person, they right. arrested the wrong person, or unfortunately, ultimate situation is someone got killed. Correct. Okay, and so when you say who is responsible, there is a different responsibility, let's say, for from a public opinion responsibility, they're going to say it's the officer's fault because okay. you didn't have your stuff okay. together. Okay. Now, from a legal perspective or whatever, who is responsible, that's a totally different question. Correct. Uh, and again, you can sue for whatever you want to or whatever, but usually nine times out of ten, and even in Breonna Taylor, I'll go ahead and let you know ahead of time, whatever, I am sure that they asserted immunity first. That they're saying, okay, no matter whether they were wrong or not, whether you believe that they were morally wrong or legally wrong, whatever, they have immunity from immunity from being sued and being held responsible for this. Now, cities do it all the time. Now, again, without, again, uh, going too off on a sidetrack or whatever, I don't know if many people from Atlanta or whatever remember, there was the uh, Johnston case. Catherine Johnston. Is that, is that with the yeah. elderly lady? Yes. Right, right. With the elderly lady, yes. right. the yes. elderly lady or whatever yes. that was 90 years old or whatever, and the officers went in. And, and, and again, part of the situation that that's different 
partially is this, and I'll, I'll say it from my perspective, and I'll let, you know, again, law enforcement give their version, whatever. These officers knew that they had probably screwed up, and then they went in there and sort of manufactured some theory or some, some uh, you know, stage the scene and this, that, and the other. So, again, a lot of that depends upon the facts of what happened. Um, right. and, and, and that's why I said there are a lot of layers. Now, at some point, I don't know whether we're going to get into this or whatever, and I'm you know, going to yield some time because I don't want to, of course, um, be in my hog. But at, at the end of the day or whatever, then once we get beyond that stage or whatever, then we need to address sort of, if you want to talk about this, what is the process with the grand jury? What is the process as to why they were not particularly charged with her death? And the question that you would ask off the air that I'm sure we're going to get to, who – Part of that you're, you're saying now, who is responsible? Okay. Will, it, it, Will, if you ain't got nothing to say, I got my second question. Well, well, I'll, I'll say this. So Go going back to the no-knock warrant. So they, it wasn't a no-knock warrant. I think it was a no-knock search warrant or a no-knock arrest warrant because they did go to, to try to arrest allegedly Brianna's ex-boyfriend who they assumed still was using her residence, uh, her address as a residence. Um, now, in the state of Kentucky, in Louisville, at the time, the no-knock warrant, which was legal, it's a no-knock warrant for them to bust into the door. Once they get inside, they have to yell, police, 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 police. Okay, Will, now, Will, stop, 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 stop they, right there. On, 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 let on, me on, ask okay. my question. Let me ask my when question. Yell it, hold on, hold on. Okay. When they're screaming, when they're screaming that, 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 that it's police, 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 police. They have, they're supposed to do it loud enough to where either, like, uh, people can hear it 150 feet away. They want it to be that loud. Only one person, or one person, one resident did say that they heard the police yell police. Others say that they did not hear anything. And that, so and I that, just want to clear that up about the whole no-knock warrant as well. And that leads to my second question. Because... Reading this note from Wiki, Wikipedia, it says in most cases, law enforcement will identify themselves just before forcefully entering the property. Correct. Now, you've heard some say they came in, but as y'all told me, a no not warrant, you don't have to announce that you're there. You don't have to announce okay, okay. You, you're there. Yeah, you, you don't. You don't. You, you don't have to announce execute, that you did. You uh -huh. have to announce once, once you, you start speak, executing. Once you're inside. Uh -huh. Now, my so so that leads to my second question: of is the boyfriend liable or responsible for her death? Because if they announced that they were there and he shot, and they shot back, is he responsible for her death? You know that that there again, we can't answer that to say who's responsible because, you know, he's acting on good faith of saying he's protecting himself and her because he probably, and see there again, like Mr. Todd say, we don't know the different layers. Did yes. he know about her ex-boyfriend? Did yes. he know about her ex-boyfriend um, conversation with Brianna? Did he know ex-boyfriend was selling drugs? You know, we don't know all that. So you have to ask yourself. You put yourself in that situation. If you're dating a girl and, and you're over her house and you don't know anything about her ex-boyfriend and all of a sudden police come busting in, you don't know. So we, we can't answer that. Okay, as an attorney, that question, because if, if, if they announce and he heard them say the police coming in and he shoots. Okay, and so now we're getting into what I was... Uh, parts you're saying about the grand jury situation because here's how it works and again as i said with the immunity to peace officers and law enforcement and a lot of government officials whatever you also have there is a different it's not i'll say there's a different approach when you're talking about liability or criminal responsibility for an officer versus criminal responsibility for a non-officer right. so when i say that or whatever and the conversation that we had the other day was this and, and, and I will give you my opinion about the grand jury proceeding in this case, whatever. I will admit, again, there's a lot of stuff that we don't know. Right. But what I will say in general, my 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 legal opinion of the um, the Kentucky Attorney General, who I'll refer to as the AG uh, every now and then or whatever, was that 
he his comments to the um take a break we're looking for a bag right now his, his comments to the general public were somewhat disingenuous and here's and i'll get to that in a second but, but let's talk about the boyfriend and him shooting at the officers number one here's what i'm gonna say under normal circumstances or whatever if the police did as they said that they did and again there's some there's some you know heard them announce didn't hear them announce i've heard that you know the person that they said came forward and maybe testified at the grand jury said he heard them announce but everybody else said that they didn't hear it. they didn't bring anybody that said that they didn't hear it. and the indication was that this individual english is not his first language and at first he said he didn't even hear them announce and then later on he came in and testified that he heard them announce now what i'm gonna say about that or what was this concerning the boyfriend one you don't know whether the boyfriend heard that or not, even if they did announce. Correct. So we don't know that. But what we do know is this. Under normal circumstances, if they were looking into him and not looking into the death of Breonna Taylor or whatever, here's how that would work legally. Legally, when he shot at the police, he committed an aggravated assault on the police officers. Now, that is a felony. Okay, let me stop you. Okay. Is that a felony if... I don't know who's coming in that door? Well, again, again we're, we're speaking... That's what he's going to get to. Okay. That, that's what I'm sitting there saying. We don't know whether he knew or not. Okay. But what I'm going to tell you is this. If these officers came to my door and kicked in the door, and they said, because there's where the controversy is, if they said police, you know, whatever, say another, and announced their presence, they've got police vest on, because usually they have on a uniform or some type of body armor, whatever, say another, and in their opinion, like, he looked right at me. There's no way he could not have known that I was a police officer. And he shot at me or whatever. He has committed an aggravated assault against that officer or those officers. That is a felony. Now, in response to him shooting at them or whatever, they returned fire. As a consequence of that, Brianna gets killed. Mm -hmm. Then legally what could have happened, and I'm not saying it should have whatever, it hasn't happened. Legally, they could have charged him with the death of Brianna as a felony murder because he committed a felony, and in response to his committing a felony, whatever, it resulted in her death. Right. And it's not it's not about intent or whatever, this, that, and the other. Now, again, like I said, this... So many layers. Right, and that's why I said there's so many layers because really the, let's say the legal consequence of what the attorney general did or whatever, or what they did with the grand jury is this. Grand jury says, we're not going to charge officers because we found that they were justified in doing this because they were fired upon first. The converse of that is, well, then you're saying he was justified in shooting at the police officers because maybe he didn't know that they were police officers or whatever. Legally, that presents a quandary from a legal perspective because you both can't necessarily be justified. Right. And normally, under normal circumstances or whatever, what they're going to say is this. And again, that's why I said grand jury process is a little bit different for law enforcement mm -hmm. because a lot of times, I know in the state of Georgia, don't know about the state of Kentucky, law enforcement is allowed to go and make a statement at the grand jury. A regular defendant is not Cannot. allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. So and, it, and the prosecutor, the prosecutor, the, the, the DA, and, and Mr. Todd, you can attest to this, the DA can almost manipulate that situation the way he wanted oh, absolutely. to go. Oh, absolutely. And that's why I said that the Kentucky AG was somewhat disingenuous because the most famous statement about the grand jury, whatever set, and DAs, and I don't know where it came from, but it's in the legal community, whatever it is, DAs and prosecutors said, I can indict a ham sandwich because usually the grand jury is a rubber stamp for the prosecutor. Mm -hmm. They do right. what they ask them to do. Mm -hmm. So if they came to them and said, we want you to indict these people for murder, correct, they would have indicted him for murder. Correct. And there would have been some question about whether or not there was justification unless the DA said, however, if you find that they were justified in returning fire, then you should not return an indictment for a homicide or murder or manslaughter, whatever, said the other. Mm -hmm. However, you have the option to use this out, which is what, you know, the um, the wanton disregard or whatever, said the other. And I think that's what probably happened. I, I can tell you this. It's so many different layers because if you're looking at Brianna's boyfriend and he was not in, in, in um, dealing in drugs or doing anything illegal, to his defense, he could say, yeah, they might announce who they were. They might announce the police, but I didn't know what was going on. I thought we were being robbed. So like Mr. Todd said, so many different layers to this. And I can assure you this, this is going to set a whole new precedence, precedent for um, law enforcement and, and everybody. And, and let me add one other thing that people don't know about the grand jury. 
the grand jury is a one-sided affair. Correct. Which means all you're hearing is from the prosecutor from the and DA. the police officers. Right. You never and the DA. The defense attorney is never there. Nope. So they don't get to cross-examine and say, like, well, what about this? What about that? We don't have to have our client, if my client is being indicted, my client is not there for that indictment process. That's why I said it's usually a rubber stamp process because whatever that DA. the DA or the prosecutor says they want them to charge, all they do is hear the officer's side. Mm -hmm. They don't. I don't get to come in here and say, well, look, yeah, my client shot this person, whatever, but it was in self-defense. Right. All those are trial defenses, and they will tell us, you need to assert that at trial. There is no, we don't get a transcript of what was we don't Say know who was there. Was right. That is a secret proceeding, whatever, that the defense attorneys never know what was presented and what wasn't. Unless you were a police officer. Right, right. No, no. And that's right. what I'm saying. Now, you. officers, law enforcement, whatever, because usually you are the guys that are there testifying. Right. So, but I'm saying even if you're a defendant as a law enforcement officer. Right, right. No, 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 no. Right. 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 And that's what we said earlier, that in the state of Georgia, police officers get a special consideration because they can go and testify and make a statement in front of the grand jury. But does the, does this vary from state to state? I would assume most of them are the same, and I don't know what happens in Kentucky. But like I said, my client can't go and make a statement in right. front of the grand he jury. He can't plead his case to say the reason I did exactly. X, Y, Z. And that's, that's you know, unfortunately, uh, that, that's kind of unfair because um, not to knock off on Brianna, not to knock away from Brianna, but that's kind of what they did to Burrow Ellis. The DA presented the evidence. He had no opportunity to present his side, so he got indicted. Ultimately, his case was overturned. In, in Brianna's case, um, un unless we can look at the transcript, you don't know exactly what the DA said to exactly. the grand jury to make them say, we we don't find these officers at fault. So the, the district attorney, the... the you know, the district attorney mostly are the ones that present stuff to the to the grand jury. Well, absolutely, and they can manipulate or or maneuver things for the for the grand jury to be one sided. But I will say this though, Rick, and it, it was very surprising. I don't know if anyone caught it, but um, the news made a statement in reference to Bjorn Taylor's boyfriend, where they said, "Hey, if you say she was doing drugs." We give you a plea deal. I don't oh, know correct, if correct, ever correct. Even caught that. correct. But they was trying to get him to roll over Umbria on the table and say, "Hey, say she was dealing the drugs, and we give you a give plea deal." Plea. Because he was initially arrested, yes, and, and charged, yes. Now those charges have again been dropped since then. But uh, again, um, uh, Mr. Dennis is absolutely correct that what they said was, "Hey, if you tell us there were drugs there, and she, you knew she was involved in drugs, we'll get rid of all your stuff." And eventually, got gotten rid of anyway but well, at the end of the day no no they went to the ex-boyfriend and tried to get him to do oh, the same that's as well too. that's true yeah they went to both boyfriends the, the previous and the ex-boyfriend to try to get them to them to say she, she had something to do with it so you know in in the big the whole scheme of things it was a bad situation a lot of um bad judgmental calls and like i said this is going to set a whole new precedent for um, law enforcement officers um, and, and, and um, trying to obtain search warrants, and it's going to make the officers get on their p's and q's, and it's going to make the judges the judges should start holding the officers to a higher standard when they're coming in to fill out these warrants, because you know you got to make sure. And, and Will that, you got anything? Yeah. All right. So so two things, and and one y'all you've already spoken on it that the. Uh, boyfriend was at, at first arrested and was going to be charged with aggravated assault or attempted murder. I forgot which one of the two. But they, it was due to public appeal, really is due to public appeal and the outrage, that those charges were dropped. Also, in the state of Kentucky, another thing that uh, was spoken about was how it's conflicting because if you, give me, if you have a no-knock warrant, and you bust into that home will also in Kentucky extend your ground. So therefore, as as, as I think Todd was alluding to earlier, you're gonna come into that conflict because this is That's my home. Saying. Someone's busting into my home. I'm I'm shooting first, mm -hmm. well, and then I'm asking questions later. Yeah. So amongst yeah, the exactly. gunfire, yes, I might not hear you yell, police. I'm shooting at whoever just bust into my door or just burst into my door. And see, so, Will. 
Will, Go ahead, Todd. Let me state this just real briefly. If there weren't all these questions about this, let's just say, for example, that, and I'm not saying they did or they, they didn't or whatever. Let's just say, for example, they executed that warrant perfectly. Okay. But Brianna got killed. And again, their contention is the police were justified in returning fire because their lives were in danger and they didn't know where, you know what was going on. Because shots were fired. So we can we can sort of agree that those are the facts. Now, again, whether or not, again, they announced their presence, whatever said the other. At the end of the day, what you said is absolutely true. But what I was saying partially is this. If they were taking the boyfriend's case to the grand jury, all that I didn't hear, I didn't know, I thought I was being robbed, the grand jury would never hear that. Never. He would have been indicted for murder, for felony murder of Breonna Taylor. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that from a legal perspective because he doesn't get to assert that. And that's why I said it's oh, different okay. for police officers or whatever because we don't get to appear in front of the grand jury and give a statement. So Why is it different for police officers? Because, again, the police officers, again, the legislature feels that what they do, and I can't, I, I'm, I'm sort of paraphrasing here because I'm not on, on, in the legislature or whatever, they feel that they're putting their lives in danger and things of that nature. That's different than, okay, a police officer kicking in your door to execute a warrant is much different than I come and kick in your door and I'm trying to rob you or, right. you know, it's my Correct. ex-girlfriend or whatever, that and the other. But if it's wrong... What? But that's for the court if it's to determine. Oh, okay. But that's for wrong. the to determine. No, no, and, and that's what I'm saying. The, the difference, however, is this. That's why I said the boyfriend would have been arrested. Yes. And he would have been charged. He doesn't get to go to the grand jury, and I will guarantee you that... The district attorney wouldn't have sat there and said, if you believe he didn't hear that they were cops or, or whatever said the other, then he could be justified. What we end up having to do is to deal with it on the back end. My client gets indicted, and what's going to have to happen is we will have to file a motion, an immunity motion. We call it an immunity motion. And we have a hearing on that, and basically what happens is the judge will make a decision as to whether or not I think it was self-defense or I thought it was justified or whatever. And if the judge says... I don't find self-defense justification. The only way that my client gets out of that situation is they got to go go to trial, present that to a jury, and hope that a jury will acquit them. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, Tom. Hey, we are gonna take a quick break, man. Hey, I got a question for you. Want to, you want to ask the question before the break or after the break? Uh, I ask after the break. Okay, okay. we are gonna take a quick break. Let everybody get some wet their palate, and uh, so uh, we will be right back. Hey, uh, hey. People, please share this because this is the conversation that need to be had because we got to calm our people down so we can think rationally, Correct. so we can make rational decisions. And this is somewhere is going to lead to voting that is about to start in this country. Of course. Hey, we so, got to so, so, think smart. We got to think smart. So think rationally. Um, we having this conversation tonight for information. Me and Will ain't finna get into it about nothing tonight. We, this is about information. We will be right black. Suburban places got me seeking for oasis. 
different style by the cases. Ladies are all bases with dime faces. Sex on the white sand beaches. The same time as though this ain't promise. I'm as determined as them old timers. I want a villa in the coast of Vika so I can smoke my fever and enjoy how life's supposed to treat you. Late in the shades of the Everglades. Finally forever paid. When the finest fabric tellers ever made. Me and my team, Caribbean cuisines. I guess being down for so long, I'm on this to see my dreams. Me being supreme master ain't much more life a fiend after But another chapter, a new way of life to adapt to Cause the streets are gas you and have you caught up in the rapture Deja vu, I can vision my killer crew more hospitable Consciously aware plus political, political Cause though they claim every man's created equal Us as native people, find it harder for nights to sleep through But once established, we eating lovely, living lavish Like the house of a sign, Pavis, I got a hat It's so plush, just to visualize it's like a coke bus Vivid enough to make living this a must plus Welcome black, welcome black, welcome black, welcome black to Barbershop Talking Random Ish with your boys, King and Sane. This your boy, Rick Kang. I am in the building. I am Will Sane. I am on the phone. <laughs> and the lovely Starlight is not here, but we, hey, hey man, we are in an in-depth conversation. Um, We're talking to an attorney, Todd, to Sheriff, former sheriffs. Um, Sheriff um, nominated Harold Dixon is in the building. Dennis is in the Harold Dennis is in the building, and we also have Carl. Y'all know that man. But Carl ain't got that. Yeah, Carl. Carl is damn, damn, hey, I'm, I'm part of the family now, man. Carl. Hey, uh, Will, you was um, you had a question. The question you had a question for? Go ahead. Yeah, so, all right, so now we know that one officer of the three who were involved in Brianna's death uh, was indicted. Brett Hankerson, uh, Brett Hankerson, he was indicted, but he was indicted not for the murder, uh, not charged with murder of Brianna, but more so because of him blindly shooting into Brianna's, uh, Brianna Taylor's apartment. So my question goes to Carl and Harold. Um, okay, so my question is, is there a rule of engagement when firing into when, when, it, when firing into homes or firing at suspects? Because uh, allegedly, this guy 
shot through walls, shot through windows, shot through a side door where he did not see the perpetrator who he was supposed to be shooting at. So to you two gentlemen, is there a rule of engagement? Well, of course, um, you know, officers don't shoot unless uh, fired upon, but he didn't get indicted because he shot in Brianna Taylor's apartment. He got indicted because he shot into someone else's apartment uh, where the bullet went through and went through their apartment where um, a family was there with their small child. And, and yes, well, it, according, well, according, it's just like, just like military, Will. Um, you know, you see, you shoot at what you see. If you don't see anything, don't shoot. You, you, you know, what are you shooting at? So. Okay, because yeah, because of what I'm reading and what I've read, and it said that it basically uh, it was he was fired, and it was a letter sent to him said that his actions uh, seriously impede the department's goal of providing the citizens of our city with the most professional law enforcement agency possible. Um, what 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 he had done, what he did was instead of going through the door. He went to the side of her apartment and started firing in right. from the screen, from the uh, screen or slide door. Right. And 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 I know that they also said like 24 hours uh, or 24 or 48 hours after the incident, he went AWOL to where no one could find him. And, and we'll, I know that. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, no, go ahead and, and finish. No. I, I didn't want to interrupt you. What I was going to say is this. Again, when we say that there are layers, there's a lot of facts we don't know. Because here's what I'll say about that or whatever. Supposing, if I understand it correctly, whatever, this warrant was being executed about 1 o'clock in the morning. Okay. So, if that's true, most people at 1 o'clock in the morning don't have a well-lit house. And so when you say you're firing blindly, you have no idea if it's completely dark in there, whatever. And again, I don't know where the shots were fired and, you know, again, the placement of, of all that stuff, whatever. And I hear what you're saying. If you're sitting outside and you're firing into the apartment, but at the end of the day, once shots are fired and you say to, for, the, for the officer, you need to be sure of who your target is, you can't be sure of that if it's pitch black in there. That's one. Number two, the, the thing that sort of gets me with this, whatever, and, and again, I'm not, I'm not, again, advocating that, things were done right or, or that the officers were right. But what I'm going to say is once I start firing a weapon or whatever, I don't know how it is that I'm supposed to contain that from going through a wall or whatever this that and the other if this is not yeah. a single family residence and you have other apartments. Yeah. Well, let me let me just say this. From being on a SWAT team and, and have been put in that situation, normally when you're standing outside the door uh, and you're not a part of the actual entry team, you are in a containment person. So, you know, he shouldn't have been fired. We are taught to not shoot blindly. I understand what Todd was saying um, because it is dark, but still, you on the outside, you are a containment person. Um, if it's a situation where you have to go in, then you act appropriately. Um, but being on the outside, there again, we have. That's why we train. That's why we have, just like you will, you know, military. We train. We're disciplined. And and that's part of um, containing and holding your discipline. Supposed to be disciplined. And, and, Will, what I would say is this. That probably answers the question as to why he was the only one who was indicted. Correct. Because he's outside. He is not in that clear and present dangerous situation. Correct. Where, and exactly. And his, his responsibility, as um, Carl said, is, if you're the defensive end. You got to turn him. You know, if you're this guy's coming out the window, you got to send him right, in. Right. If this guy's coming out the window or whatever, trying to get away, you're contained. You're, you're not there to sort of like just fire blindly into an open space or a window. So, so, Will, that was why he was singled out because of his actions alone. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that that probably clear up a lot of because right. a lot of misconception people like people are asking well why did he get indicted and other people didn't well yeah that was why because he was outside he was outside okay. not actually knowing what, what was, was taking on. place now you know people in there shooting right and you know things are breaking bad but you don't have eyes on the situation. He hears shots fired, and then all of a sudden he does he Barney shooting. Fife, and he just starts shooting. <laughs> right, right. Okay. So, yeah, you Because he could have shot another officer. Correct. Exactly. Correct. So it's it's a part of discipline. And when you're on that kind of um, when you're on that kind of situation and, and, and 
like I said, being on a uh, SWAT team and, and being on the damn noise, on. Be, being on um, on high risk um, warrants and stuff like that, discipline plays a very big part. And when you're on containment, although you want to be on that entry team, you want to be in the action, your role at that particular time is containment. You have to have discipline. With, are there any qualifications for being on the containment as opposed to being on the entry team? Is there certain qualifications? Do you have to, uh, like, get certain training? No, everybody okay. the same. receive the same training. Okay. It just depends on what your involvement in that particular case is. He might have been the officer just there to assist. Uh, the, the, the other officers might have been actually the ones who were surveilling, um, making phone calls, doing all the legwork. So let's just like Will and Martin, when they call their boys to come in, they are for backup and containment. They the one actually going into the funeral home to find the, uh, the drugs. Correct. Okay. Y'all ain't like nobody got that but me. Yeah. Hey, somebody just walked in the ball shop. What you need? What you want? Okay, so the ex-boyfriend's name is Glover, okay? Y'all hear me okay? Yeah, we hear you, man. The ex-boyfriend's name is Glover. Uh -huh. And what Hankerson did was he was at the door with the other two officers, um, Cosgrove and the guy that got shot, Matheson, I think his last name is. But instead of rushing the door with him, he backed out. and He was in the parking lot. He wasn't at the door, side door. He was in the parking lot firing into her unit through the um, closed screen porch. And what Kenny Walker has said on audio recording, I heard it myself, he was the guy that was there. He said it was a, it was a short series of knocks. And part of the reason why he was there was because Glover had come by the house before and he had to rush him out. He had to get rid of him, so he was there just in case Glover came back. But he said there was a short series of knocks. Him and Brianna together said, who is it? And the police didn't say anything. And there was another short series of not, and he says it again. Who is it? Loud. Who is it? And she's saying who is it, too, and he steps out into the hallway of the apartment. Then there's a third series, and he again, he's got his gun at this point, and she's standing next to him in the hallway, according to Kenny Walker. And she, there was a third series, and he goes, who is it? Then they come in, then he fires, and then they announce who they are. That's how it went down. Okay, and that's those are his own words, and the police officers confirmed one of them at least confirmed it as well. And there's no alleged, there's no allegedly, Hankerson did that, and he probably caused the other two officers to continue shooting because he's out in the parking lot shooting into her unit, and they're facing her unit, and there's fire, there's gunfire in there. Right. So that caused that. Right. And then, and then as far as the um the charge that Hankerson got. And the and the reason why the other two didn't get charges, there was no other route for the uh, there was no other route for Cameron. He couldn't get him for manslaughter because it wasn't manslaughter. By the uh, I gave the um, penal code to Greg before he brought me in, so y'all could look at it. The only thing they had available that they could charge anybody with that could get a clean conviction was what Hankerson did. There was no there was no other route, man. And be clear on this. They, they had good reason to be there because there's also audio recording. Right, because they a, already of a knew. Female, of a female Louisville police officer a few weeks before this, maybe a month or so, maybe, where um, she's talking with Brianna at her home where she got murdered with um, Glover about a rental car. That she, t she, she rented a car, turned it over to Glover, and Glover was involved in a murder. See, and, well, see well, let's go back. Let's start at the beginning. The police had reason to to investigate that apartment in the very beginning because of the ex-boyfriend. Mm -hmm. The ex-boyfriend is the subject, and, and, and Brianna, unfortunately, but they are the subject of the investigation because of his involvement with her. Mm -hmm. So the police had valid reason in the whole beginning. So it's so many different layers to this. And, there aren't um, really that many. Yes, really there, no, no, no. Yeah, there, it there, really is. There, there, it, was there, clear there, she was, the, it was clear that she was involved. Well, they had know, her, they had her video. Well, 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 well Eric, hold, 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 Eric, hold, hold, Eric, hold, Eric. Hold, hold on, hold on real quick. Hold on real quick. Now, you're saying that it's clear that she was involved, but but let's be clear. It's not as clear that she was involved with selling drugs with Jamar, with her ex-boyfriend. That is not clear. Well. And what, what is, what, now, what has happened 
is she has bailed him out of jail, I believe, twice. But it's not clear that she was actually a mule for him, a drug trafficking, holding drugs for him, and holding cash for him. That they got not. Glover. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Eric. What you was going to say, Todd? No, and I was just going to say, Eric, at the end of the day or whatever, I hear what you're saying. You've heard what you've heard or whatever. you like, this is cut and dry. It's not cut and dry. Never, it's never, never it's that cut, cut and dry. And, dry. And, and, and there's not a case that has been there that's more cut and dry or or whatever. They could have her own video or whatever, say another. Uh, again, I, you know, I'll admit, you may know more about the facts and you made your opinion based upon those facts or whatever, but I would disagree with you that this is cut and dry, that she was involved or whatever uh, from the perspective that she did. It's almost like you're saying, well, she may not have done that, but she did something, and that's what put the police on Well, her. here's where I am with it. She didn't do anything that deserved, that got her what she got. Okay, I got, got you. No, I understand nothing. that. I, I'm not, but what I'm not I saying. am saying is her con- even Kenny Walker, her boyfriend, didn't know that she was still she was still messing around with Glover. He's finding this stuff out now. They got her on video going to the trap house with Glover in her car, and they're going in there getting money, getting dope, and coming back. They got Glover on recording. Now this is this isn't her talking. This is Glover talking. She's holding his money. Okay, and Eric, she bailed him out with Eric, his money now that there, she had. Eric, now there again, uh, Rick. That's what I explained to you about the current boyfriend. If he's unaware. Yeah. Of all the activities that are on. going on. Yeah. How can you blame him for defending himself in that? You there, can't. But, but Eric, there again, didn't we just say different levels, layers to this? Those are part of the layers. That's that's why. But they're not a lot. Okay. So okay. It's, okay. It's, okay. It's, okay. A very short, it's a very short stack. Okay. So my question is, my qu- so, so, so now my question to Todd, Harold, Carl. How did he just shut this case down? Okay, Brianna just got, her family just got paid $12 million, which is civil, which we know is different from criminal. But I still have a question of, what, of how is it different? Because if you're guilty of wrongful death, that means... Okay. Somebody is guilty well, of wrongful but, death. But here, here, here's the point that you okay. It's break it down to it, me it, as if I was a five year old no, because no, I know no, a lot no, of people no, no. need to hear this. And all I'm gonna tell you whatever is there's a legal fiction in there, whatever. That legal fiction, whatever is this. The city of Louisville paid her twelve million dollars, but there's a clause that's like we're not admitting any liability. Right. right. Period. Like, point blank no, no, story. Right. Right. I'm not all right. admitting you know, guilt or uh, innocence. Right, just, right. I mean, the, the deal I'll is, say the, the logical answer to that or whatever is the public's like, you wouldn't have paid if you no were low. liable. No low. Well, yeah, no low. So kind of like no, no, so no, kind of like no low for us regular people. Yeah, it's, sort of like a, it's like civil no low. So right. basically you're like, okay, just because we gave you $12 million doesn't mean that we're admitting any we liability. So we paying you this twelve. Tw- we paying you this 12 to shut the hell up. To go away. Yeah, I mean, yeah, to go away. Almost, almost, and that's not why almost, they paid it. Huh? That's not why they paid it. No. I agree. That's not, that's not shut up. Okay, so. Okay, well, so, so, yeah, why, why they. Okay, okay hold on. No, 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 I, I need, yeah, I need, yeah, I need yeah, to hear from both of y'all. No, Will said it too. No, no. I need to hear from both of y'all. So, why so, did so, they pay I, it? I want to see what paperwork y'all have that does not say that there is a. A, we are not admitting any liability. Now, if you've got a copy of the settlement agreement, uh, let me see it. Uh, I'll give you my phone number. You can go ahead and send it over. So, Will, Will, Will and Eric, why Why then? Because why did they, they pay, why they pay her mother? Yeah. Go ahead, Will. Go ahead, Will. I want to hear from you first. Because To me, that's not shut up money. That's not hush money as to we don't want to hear you talk anymore. We're being, that, I'm being to, facetious to when me, I say it's hush money. But go ahead. I'm not. <laughs> To me, to, to me personally, this, it is admitting that, okay, something went wrong. Correct. Something went wrong. Correct. She shouldn't have died. Correct. But we can't be charged with murder for that death. So to me, it's not hush money. It's more so sorry money. You can continue to fight and yell. It, it would be hush money to me if you had to sign a non-disclosure agreement. But hold on, hold on. So, so, hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. We, we, will. I guarantee you. I, I, I don't know. One. I don't know ish about the law, Jasmine. I said ish. 
I don't know ish about the law, but I guarantee you when they gave her that 12 million, when they gave the family 12 million, she had to sign a non disclosure uh, agreement. That's why I said. And that's, 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 that's for me dealing with music. No, no, no. And that's other why stuff. I said. That, okay, okay. I, no, she did not. Okay, okay. I told you. Show me the settlement agreement because you haven't seen it, and I know I haven't seen it. But I will tell you, it is standard fare. And if you go back and look at the. Uh, if, if you look at the. Uh, uh, broadcast about when they announced they were going to give them $12 million, they specifically said, we're not admitting any liability. That's what they do in every civil lawsuit that they settle. Right. They don't ever admit liability. They may give you a, a check, whatever, and that's why I said, the the funny thing about it, whatever, and I'm not disagreeing with you what it looks like publicly, whatever. Publicly, if you gave me a check, whatever, you're guilty. But I'm just telling you, I just sat there and said, the fiction behind whatever is they will always say this is not us admitting any liability. Mm -hmm. and now, you got, what you right. take whatever and, want and, to and, for their game check. What you have to understand is once they took that check, that's it. That's the end of that case. Right. Because they're going to sign a release to release any and all that's claims, that future, whatever this, that, and the other. Now, again, like I said, I know from the perspective that I have done personal injury cases or whatever, they will send my client a release when that's they've been it. in an accident or whatever. They're like, hey, you ain't coming back for nothing else, whatever. And, right. And, and again, You're not gonna they're not going to come back two admitted. years down the line. Like I said, it's a legal fiction, and I get it. It does not make sense to the general public, whatever. All I'm telling you is what the law is saying, which is there is – no admission of liability when we wrote you this check, and there is probably a NDA that is attached to that, and if you go and get me a copy of the settlement agreement or whatever and show me where there's not one, then that's fine. I haven't seen it. I'm just telling you that the normal course of business, whatever, when they settle these cases or whatever, they always say, we're not admitting any liability. I don't care if they wrote a check for $100 million. Right. They're like, we're not admitting liability. And, and like I said, yeah. I was sort of joking when I said it was hush money. It's really not. The city of Louisville and their attorneys, whatever, have to assess a case like anybody else. Number one, I can go ahead and tell you, they asserted immunity because all that Crumpet did was sent a a um, a notice of claim, and they've got to do that within a certain time period. Usually in Georgia, yep. it's six months or 12 months, whatever, depending on whether it's the state or a county. First response is going to be like... We have immunity. Uh -huh. That doesn't mean we won't talk to you, whatever. They can waive immunity or whatever. But their their defense is if he files a lawsuit, the first thing they go to the judge is say, like, we have immunity. We want summary judgment. And therefore, they can't sue us no matter what we did or no matter right. what happened. That's the first thing. Now, that does not mean that they won't talk. And like I said, at the end of the day, when they did that settlement order, they assessed if we go to a jury, if we get over the, if they get past the immunity hump, how much is this going to cost us potentially with a jury verdict? If they right. come back with a $150 million jury verdict, whatever, what are we going to do? So, again, at the end of the day, you can argue with me all you want and say that, like, that means that they're guilty. I said, yes, from the general public's perspective, whatever, when you write that check, that means that you are doing something. You're accepting but I said, that responsibility. But I, said, but I said from the legal perspective, there is a clause in there saying we're not saying we're liable for any of this, whatever. It's, it's 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 not really nuisance money, and I, I said I was joking when I said that or whatever. It's not hush money, but it is like we have made an assessment. If we go to trial and lose this, whatever, we got to pay out a hundred million dollars, whatever. We brother settle be with way them. more than but twelve. There's, there's also something else. There's, there's yeah, also something else that came up in the conversation. Most likely, if you go to trial and you lose. Because it's pretty clear that we got the law on our side. No, no, and you're right. And we're not, we not giving you anything. You're, you're right, sir. And that's what I'm saying. Both sides made an assessment. So what they did, what they most likely <laughs> did, because I've seen this happen numerous times before up close, they looked, they said, okay, she's an EMT, she's relatively intelligent. Even though she wasn't going to make 200000 this year, just on her intelligence alone, she probably could have made 200000 and then they took 200000 and a little bit more and took it over 50 years' time, and they came up with 12 mil. What? And they said if she worked to the age of 76, this is how much she would have made if she made 200 plus mil a year. And, and, absolutely. and they said, take it. Absolutely, she said, Eric, okay. A, a, Eric, absolutely. And that's what I'm sitting there telling you, whatever. I said they assessed the case. Right. One. But so, that, did, so did the other okay, side. I, I, okay, Eric, we've already established that the defense. Uh, assess the case, and they're like, if we go and we lose and you get nothing, you might as well take this 12. I got that. Both sides assess the case. What I'm telling you, whatever, you are right with you, what you said, because here's the difference. If 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 uh, Breonna Taylor was, and, and, and I'm going to just say, an uneducated mother of 10 
who has never worked a real job other than McDonald's or whatever, she would not have gotten $12 billion. And she if got they had proof that she was a dope dealer, okay. which they did not have. Okay, it, it, uh, whatever it was to, to diminish that settlement or whatever, it would have happened. Her being educated and the job that she had or whatever, you're right. What they would do is get an actuary. They're going to project out what her they income would have been. assessment of everything. Right. What her income may have been over the next 50 years. Say she may live to be 75 years old. She's right. this old. So 50 years of salary, whatever, saying, you're absolutely right. So I'm not disagreeing with you on whatever. Both sides assess how much you want right. to lose. Do you want to go to trial and this jury in, and, and, take and, a chance. And, and Kentucky says, well, she was black. Yep, it was wrong. We're going to give you a dollar. That's I what we think. You, I tell you, who got the strongest hey, case. Hey, Todd. Kenny, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Todd. Hold on, Todd. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Will. Kenny Walker got hey, the strongest Todd, I'm case. I'm glad you just brought you just brought up Todd. You just brought up you just brought up something good, and, and Eric and Eric, you did as well. How do they come to that amount? And the reason why I'm asking this is because uh, people try to bring up. The white female in Minneapolis, Minnesota, who was killed by, by the police policeman officer. there, when he got twenty, when she got twenty million, and Brianna's 50. family got twelve million. No, she got fifty. 50. Say, I think she got like fifty million. To, no, 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 no. Y'all talking about two different things. He's talking about no, the no, one no, that no. got. No, no. Hold on, hold on, Will. I'm telling you, we had a conversation off the air. We're not talking okay. about Aaron. Uh, Aaron Muhammad. Andrews. That's the, Muhammad is the Muhammad, one who's okay, okay, supposedly. Okay, okay, okay. So that woman didn't get fifty million in the wrongful death. She, uh, he may be right. No, she may have got twenty. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, she, yeah, she got two, yeah, she got twenty mil. So and it's a so different tax. Hold, hold on, hold on, Eric. So people were upset in arms and saying, "So you're telling me that a white that a white woman's life is worth eight million more than a black female's life?" Uh, okay, and again, again. <laughs> People look at it, and if you want to break it down to the basic thing, well, she got 20, she got 12, they're absolutely right. Say, well, she's white, and that's the only reason she got $8 million more. The problem is, as I said, when they assess this, let's say, for example, this. If I were to get murdered by the police, whatever, said, and the other, I have a law degree. I've been practicing law for 30 years almost, whatever, said, and the other. I'm going to get more than the guy who worked at McDonald's. So right. you can't sit there and say, okay. well, he's black and he's black or whatever, right. but he got paid $50 million when they murdered him, but then the guy that worked at McDonald's got made got One five, million. you know, whatever. Yeah, so at the end of the day, they make that assessment. I just told you, they make an assessment. They look at what is the education of this person? What is the likelihood of them advancing through their career and how much could they potentially make? They look at income potential. They look at, like, what is their education all this stuff, whatever. What so, again, I don't know what the white woman in Minnesota's education was, but, again, I'm not going to sit there and say because she was white, she got $8 million more than Brianna. Brianna. She may have gotten more because they assessed. Maybe she's a college professor. I don't know. But usually they're looking. Is she a pharmacist or something? Right, but that's what I'm saying. But is a pharmacist compared to an EMT or whatever? At the end of the day, their assessment is the pharmacist will get paid more and can earn more over a lifetime okay. than an EMT. Okay. And also, so they. But also, think tired. about this. But also, hold on. 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 I want to say this. It doesn't matter how they assess it. Whether she's worth twenty million, she's worth twelve. The family still could have turned it down and just went. Absolutely. Court, right? So That's my let's point. not right. get in app involved with apples and oranges. Twenty million or twelve million. If that, you didn't want the twelve, don't take it and take point. the trial. That's my right. point. And, and that's where again the defense is going to have to make an assessment. Hey. We may go to trial and they give us five. Then we're going to be stuck with five. Right. So we might need to take this ten. So right. as I said, both sides made an assessment in whether to accept this settlement or whether or not to basically take this to a trial. And I will guarantee you, whatever. Again. The city of Louisville, their fear is, hey, we get a $100 million verdict against us, whatever, and then the defense is like, they may give us a million dollars. Right. But it, it, here's the thing, and, and Eric and Will, it goes back to voting, putting the right representation in the office. Local rep representation and, and on up. Everybody thinks the presidential election is the right. most important election. It Local. is not. It Local. goes back to voting, putting the right Local people elections. in the right places that have our best interest for the community. Well, let me say this. Before you vote, you need to lobby, because people lobby for Cameron to get in office before they voted on him. But well, you, you know, need to, well, need well, to lobby. Well, let's talk about him for a second, and just briefly, I don't want to belabor this, whatever, and I'm going to say whatever. First of all, I'm not knocking him for being a Republican, but do you know who his wife is? Yeah, um, Mitch McConaughey's niece. Absolutely. So Mitch McConnell... 
McConnell, yeah. Mitch McConnell, the senator, senior senator from Kentucky, is carrying a lot of political weight or whatever and probably put a lot of weight behind that and him getting elected in a statewide election. Right. So look, take that for what it's worth. But let me, let me say this about Kenny Walker, man. Kenny Walker really deserves more money than her mother does because Kenny Walker pledged his life to this girl, woman, and, right, and he defended her, as he should have done. He defended her. And in his defense, along with his pledge to her, he watched her die right in front of him. Well, and he's going to get... Uh, you know, <laughs> he right. deserved more okay. money okay. than Tanisha, but, but let me Tanika you, Palmer. Let, let, me, let me tell you who's going to get more money out of this, and, and it's not even part of this conversation. Who I think is going to get more money than uh, Brianna or anything like that or whatever. The guy who got shot up, up in Kenosha or whatever, who got paralyzed. Oh, yes. yeah. He's, he's, he's right. going to get probably... And his kids. Okay, and, and, and the reason why, and why that's why, I said, that's why I said that assessment comes into play, whatever, because one, now they he got may to be take paralyzed for the rest of his their life. Kids. Well, he's paralyzed for the rest of his life, potentially, whatever. He is never going to walk again, or whatever. He's going to require medical care for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. So his settlement, and they will settle, is probably going to be closer to $50 million, or whatever. Maybe I'll guarantee you that. that. Okay, well, look, here, here's, okay, let, let's put it this way, Eric. There ain't going to be a city that's going to write a $100 million check. I don't give a damn who you are. Just right. Let's just keep that real. Yeah, let's keep <laughs> that let's just keep that real. They're going to low ball you. Yeah. So, so, so you going to get paid. Those three kids this okay, side are going to okay, get okay, paid, well, too. Well, we can keep arguing about that or whatever. What, what, what I'm going to tell you is, like, at the end of the day, they ain't writing $100 million checks for a black man or white man or whatever. Or another. They'll take that to trial and think. And, again, what you got to do is, like, let's think about that jury pool in Kenosha. Then white people be like, well, if a black guy got a million dollars, that's a lot of money. Right. That's what we need to settle for. Right. That's right. what the verdict needs to come back for. So don't sit there and think that he's going to get $100 million. Because then like, we got to write a check for $100 million. We might as well let the jury decide we're what gonna to do. Exactly. We're going to take it to the court. That's that assessment thing. And if they're we, like, no, there's no way. Because like, what are, what's the downside? You're going to give them $3 million? Hell, we're going to appeal the verdict anyway. Right. And, 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 and you know that will get nothing. And, and the Court of Appeals is probably going to reduce that verdict. Okay. So, I mean, and it's going to drag out. Oh, drag it out until it's they run drag out. Out. So, so at some point, it's like, do you want to wait six years for a trial and get a verdict? Or do you want to take this $50 million check and, right and, now? And let me explain something to you on that one, Eric. You got to understand, the longer you drag that out, the more you pay your attorney. Exactly. Oh, yeah, that's real. That's real, but I'm talking about each one of those three kids are going to get some money, too. Hey, Carl, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that they won't. Hey, Carl, we'll see you at, 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 this, at the spot on Memorial. Love you, man. But, okay, I mean, like I said, I mean, I just want to be clear about that or whatever, and I, and I get it. I get some of the anger. I get that where people want to, you know, again, just look at numbers. Numbers aren't, they don't tell the whole story. That's the unfortunate thing or whatever. And we got to say one thing for sure. They couldn't get Cameron on one thing. He followed the law all the way down the line. Daniel Cameron followed the law well, all the way Daniel down the line. Daniel Cameron manipulated the law, as I said, as he was required or he's entitled to do. I'll leave it okay. at that. Well, he okay. followed the law or not or whatever, that's a different story. But, yes, he used the law to his advantage or whatever. And I've already said before whatever that all prosecutors or whatever have the ability to manipulate a grand jury to get the grand jury to do what they want them to do, and that's fine by me. That may need to change or whatever. Like I said, at the end of the day, it's a one-sided affair, and I'll leave it at that. I wasn't there. so. Okay, quick question, quick question before we go, because I know everybody tired. Um, Crump. Crump said that the defense did not um, put certain evidence out there. That the prosecutor did? The defense. Who's the defense? He didn't release the transcripts. Who? I mean, well, well th there was not evidence. He said the defense, I guess the, 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 He's talking about the prosecution. Well, you're talking about the AG. That's why when you keep saying the defense, it's not the defense. Okay. It's the prosecutor. That's the prosecutor. But at the end of the day or whatever, the, the deal is, that's why I've already said, the grand jury proceedings is a secret proceedings. They don't have to release what they told the grand jury. That is correct. They don't have to give a transcript. They may not even have a transcript. Because they don't want defense attorneys to have availability to that or whatever. We as defense attorneys may sit there and say, I want the transcript from the grand jury proceeding, whatever. And they're like, there is no transcript. And so, again, the governor is encouraging him to release what witnesses, whatever, said and the other. But like I said, that the grand jury proceeding is sacred, so to speak, whatever. And I'm putting air quotes around that. And it's a secret proceeding or whatever. So 
he doesn't have to tell you what he did. In layman's term, as if I'm uh, as if I'm a five year old. This is a one sided. This was a one sided process. As all of them are. Uh, okay. okay. And again, let me let me repeat and be clear about that. Every grand jury proceeding is one-sided. There is no defense there. There is no defendant there. And only for police officers, usually or whatever, do police officers get the opportunity to go to a grand jury and make a statement. Regular defendants don't get to make a statement. Okay, right. uh, and, 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 and Todd, and uh, I'm not trying to make you say this because we crazy. Say that slowly so that we as black folks hear that. Okay. Because when 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 Crump goes on these 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 networks and say that the defense was not allowed to um present evidence. Then again, Crump, okay, and again, I'm not saying Crump knows criminal law or not or whatever, civil law, so he may be a civil law specialist or whatever. In no grand jury proceeding, with exception of pot potentially police officers or whatever, does the defendant get to present any evidence. Zero. None. Across the United States of America, whatever, it has been that way for centuries. The defendant does not get to go and present evidence to the grand jury. It is a one-sided affair. That's why most grand jury indictments are rubber stamps. That's why you have a trial later on, because what the judge will say, even if you go to a trial, is the indictment is not evidence. It is a form of getting this case to where we are right now. Mm -hmm. To the indictment, the defendant has pled not guilty. You are to consider the evidence that's presented in this courtroom, not the fact that he got indicted or a grand jury indicted him as evidence of guilt. It is a formal process to get us to a trial situation. Mm -hmm. But like I said, no defendant no matter who they are, unless you're a police officer for the most part or whatever, okay. has the right to attend a grand jury proceeding or to speak at a grand jury proceeding or to present any evidence. It is all one-sided. The police officer comes in and says, like, hey, I saw Johnny over there, Johnny shot, shot Todd or whatever, and we want you to indict uh, Johnny for murder. Okay, we give you a murder indictment. So there now is no... prove it. Right, no, and that's what the trial is for. Yep. The trial is now you got to prove this beyond a reasonable doubt that Johnny shot, shot Todd, and we have you know witnesses, whatever, said the other, and I can present my my defense, whatever, said the other. But a grand jury proceeding has no defendants. Mm -hmm. And Crump, and Crump wasn't crying foul because they didn't get to see the evidence. Crump was just saying he does. The prosecutor does have the right to release the transcripts oh, if he so no, chooses. No, no, absolutely. So no. release it. And I agree. It is within the prosecutor's discretion as to whether or not he wants to sit there and say, here's who we call, here's this, that, and the other. Here's the witness we call, or whatever, who said that they heard them announce their presence, whatever, and here are the people that we call at the grand jury. Absolutely. You're absolutely Don't count right. on it. Oh, well, come on. We, 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 I think that that's probably yeah, a done deal. Happen. Yeah, that's not going to happen, Todd. Hey, Will, you got any last <laughs> words, my brother? Hey, man, I think we had a good, I think we had a good panel. I think I... I, I applaud everybody for coming in. I thank everybody for coming in. Um, I'm not going to go around the room and ask how, what do everyone think about should this have gone to trial? Should an officer have been convicted? I, I think I'll just leave that out for the public. If y'all want to say how you feel, uh, Rick, if you want to ask uh, a vote of how people feel, if someone should be uh, indicted, that, that, that's you, my friend. But I thank everybody for what they've done, for what they, uh, for their particular expertise being provided for tonight's show. So thank y'all very much, fellas. I, I'm I'm glad to be here. And what I will say again is, as uh, as Rick said, go vote. So if you don't like that prosecutor not prosecuting these people and not indicting them, whatever, vote them out of office. That is correct. Harold Dixon. Harold Dennis. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, my brother, for showing up tonight. Hey, that's no problem. Hey, man. I, I, because, I, because n let me tell you why I'm thanking you. This is a stinky situation. And right now you're running for office. Mm -hmm. This could, like, sway some guy. Could be, full disclosure, I had a conversation with you before we walked in here. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. I didn't want to put you in a light that would have hurt that would hurt you. Right. Thank you for showing up tonight. 
That's no problem. Thank you for having um, this conversation with us tonight. You know, uh, like once again, thank you, uh, Will, and also Todd, the attorney, um, just to be here. Um, it's an honor and privilege to be here. And um, if I want to be your sheriff of DeKalb County, um, my job is to get involved with uh, what's going on in, in the public. I can't hide. That, that's the problem. You have these politicians. They, they want to jump out on television and get your vote, but then they go hide. Yes, sir. My job as the sheriff is to protect everyone in the county and go out and do your due diligence and make a positive change. If you want to see change, do it on your local level. Absolutely. What can they find you, Todd? Um, Todd, where can they find you? Look, I'm going to give my telephone number. Just text me. <laughs> <laughs> 404-374-1367-again, 404-374-1367. Um, or you can email me at D is in David, T is in Todd. My last name is Wooten, W-O-O-T-E-N. 384 at yahoo.com. Eric, feel free to email me or whatever because I, I know that you seem to be highly <laughs> stimulated a lot of times or whatever. So if you got something you want to debate about and questions or whatever, next time, you know, possibly we don't know what's going to happen, whether we'll talk about Ginsburg and who's going to replace her. Hey, man, I'm going to email you tonight. I got words. <laughs> hey, he got questions. Look, 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 look. As, as they say, no good deed goes unpunished. I, 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 mean, I know. I'm joking, too. I, I was going to say, I may regret giving you my email address. You're like, okay, I got to block him. No, I'm just, I, I, I'm just, I, I, I'm just kidding. Because I will tell you, I'm usually, I mean, with COVID and stuff going on, I'm usually up and, and whatever this and the other, but I will tell you, you're not going to work my mind or whatever 24 7. So, <laughs> hey, Tom. And, and hey, I'm not, and, 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 hey, hey, let hey, me Rick. say, let, let me say one, one other thing, uh, Eric. I passed the bar, so I'm not going to get stuck in some of these hypothetical questions like, well, that's not what the bar would say. So, I, I, so let's just keep it clean or whatever. <laughs> but uh, I would enjoy communicating with you. Hey, can I ask the sheriff a question? Certainly go ahead, sir. <laughs> hey, yo, man, you ever thought about selling them um, them dinners out at the county, at the county lockup, make some extra dollar for the county? <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't, we won't be selling those dinners, but um, certainly it's plain enough money in the county where I can um, do my job effectively, where I do not have to raise taxes and actually also give money back um, to the citizens of the county. Hey, yeah. Harold, tell, tell them where the they can find cars you. cars would be good piece of delivery cars, and you ain't got to stop for traffic lights. You always be on time. <laughs> <laughs> Harold, tell them where they can find you, man, and, and, and get to know your platform and what you stand for. Certainly, certainly. They can contact me. Um, as Ty gave out his number, I give out my number, 404-590-6269, 404-590-6269. And he do answer the damn phone. And I answer my phone. And you can also go to my website, um, Harold Dennis. For sheriff, f o r sheriff. dot com. Once again, Harold Dennis for sheriff. dot com, and you can email me h dennis for sheriff at gmail. dot com. And um, I welcome all um, questions, any concerns, and uh, what you would like to see um, in the county, because we have to work together. It, it takes a village to raise a child. It also takes a village to um, turn a county around and, and, and put it in a positive and take it in a great light. Hey, Tom, tell them where they can find you at. No, 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 excuse me. Eric, tell them where they can find your ass at. I'm going to be in Magic City yeah, trying yeah. to trade food stamps for lap dances tonight. <laughs> what time? What time? Because I need, I, I, hey, I want me some, I want me, hey, I want me some, I want me some lemon, I want me some lemon pepper lose. Okay, Eric, <laughs> Eric, Eric, so you see, I'm assuming you've seen the video, get your booty to the polls. Yeah, I did see that, as a matter of fact. <laughs> oh, they got a video? Oh, yes. I was about to ask. Is, is that, I, didn't, I didn't know if that was right. Yes. Look, I got I excited. Well, well I, I was going to ask what you need to do while you're down in Magic City. Ask nah, them. I'm just talking junk, man. I, I know, but I, I'm going to talk junk with you. When you go down there. Ask, I didn't know if that was real, though, for real. Somebody sent that to me. No, I, I think it's real. But when you go down yeah. there, whatever, ask them if I bring my I voted sticker or whatever on election night or whatever, do I get a discount? Hey, please ask that because we need to know that. That's Early that's important. That's important. Tell, tell them they, 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 and, and tell them they can get some business and they can get some business. Sir. Hey, <laughs> with that being said, the, the, the Friday before um, early voting starts, mm -hmm. Harold, I want you, Todd, I would like for y'all to come in here. And let's talk about the politics and everything that's going on, if it's possible. 
Okay. Certainly. I, I'd love and, to come and, back. And, I, and, I'd and let me it. say this whatever for the uh, for the people out there, whatever. If you're not registered to vote, October the 5th is the deadline for this Certainly. upcoming election in November. And they send it updates to your damn phone. There's right. no fucking reason. And we off air, hey. Jasmine. There's no fucking reason <laughs> why you are not registered to vote. Right. You can also go to my website and register hey, Rick, to vote. Rick. Yes, sir. Right. What? Hey, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta say, I gotta give, uh, al- I got an alibi. Hey, Todd, I'm gonna tell you. Thank you very much. The last time you were on our show, I asked you a question about DUI. If I get pulled over for it, if I get pulled over, should I just refuse the breathalyzer? Or should I just go ahead and blow it? You said, hey, if you refuse, then they can take you in and then they and can spend your license mm-hmm. and all this stuff. Todd, that same damn night I got pulled over and I was about to tell that man, hell no, I refuse. But then I thought about what you said and I blew the damn test anyway. I knew I wasn't drinking. Okay, I know and, I wasn't and, drunk. And that's the easiest but, way to thank just, you, Tom. just comply. I mean, when you, say, when you sit there and say, I ain't taking it. You're going to jail. You're going to jail. Hey, hey, thank, the, thank you, Todd. Hey, the good I thing is, you. when we can get Todd Hill, we can get some valuable a- information out of his ass. Yeah, <laughs> when we can right. get him <laughs> Great. So, Todd, I owe you a big bottle of whatever you want for that. Okay, well. Hey, well, hey, hey well, well, the Friday before the early elections, he will be here because he said it. And uh, so, bring that bottle in. Don't be looking at me crazy, Todd. Yeah. I will call I you. Okay, all right. <laughs> Tell the crash works better, Ty. Look, 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 I know Rick is going to <laughs> remind me and he's going to do whatever. It, and I won't say it's harass me, hound me, whatever, standing, but he's going to do whatever it takes to get me here, whatever. So I, I'll make that commitment. <laughs> hey, Greg. Because I'm going to go vote early anyway. Yes, so sir. Good. I'm not good. mailing in. I, Everyone, I, I, please get out and vote early. Do early voting. You can walk in, walk out. You'll be done in five minutes. Please don't wait until the last minute. Oh, absolutely. And do not send mail in vo- um, ballots. Do not do it. I'm telling you. Do not do it. But you Republican, you, you know, but you Republican, that don't y'all like the whole, y'all, y'all, y'all and we ain't going to start it tonight. Well, well, we, that'll yeah. be a whole nother hour. <laughs> we'll be a whole nother hour. Don't, don't, don't get in that conversation with me, Harold. Well, Big sure. But a real Republican to tell you, go vote early. Do not, <laughs> do not send any mail-in ballots. Okay. Big sure, you good for tonight? And vote, and vote down And vote down the ballot. Read. Oh yeah, well, well, yeah, yeah. Don't sure. just vote for president. Vote those local elections. Number one, important. You may have amendments to the constitution, whatever. Read, or well, better yet, mm-hmm. look at the ballot before you go. Yes. So you know what you're looking at. Where or can we find? Right. Hold on, hold on. That's valuable information. Slow down and say where can where can we find that? So information? in Fulton County, you can go to the, your voter registrations office, go right. online, and it, they will have a an actual ballot. On, right, right. On, How about the cab county? Online. Most DeKalb counties are thing. gonna have a sample ballot if you go to the. Uh, Board of Elections in your county, whatever, they will have a sample ballot as to what's going to be on there, what questions, who's running, and all that stuff. So you have all that information before you walk through the door. And you still got time to get some emails to the candidates or like a radio broadcast and ask these people legitimate questions about why they want this job and what they're going to do. Absolutely. Hey, hey, um, Eric, would you order me some um, hot lemon pepper Lou Williams Wayne's? (laughs) Because I'm anything, on the way. Anything I could get with food stamps, I will. I, will I don't give a damn. But you better see my too. cash. But you better see my damn cashier on your way out. And we don't take soup food stamps. Well, here we go. Big Shul, what can we find you at, can. Big Shul? I ain't said nothing this whole show. But anyway, um, <laughs> uh, I guess you can follow me at on at, at G Plays It Cool on Instagram. And uh, if you're listening tomorrow morning, if no one's hungover or anything, uh, Three Point Conversion mm-hmm. Radio. 10 a.m. to noon on Real 1100. Plug your shit, man. Plug your shit, man. Uh, what else I got? Uh, Sports Roundtable Wednesdays. Hey, man, uh, this is the best. DNA Sports Talk Mondays. Greg Hurd, Big Shook is uh, the best video producer, podcast producer in the game. If you want to find him, Greg, give him your information, man. We finna make money. I'm I'm building a Facebook page. I'll let you know what the uh, Facebook URL is next week. Um, this is just an idea that came in the last couple hours. And so, talking around the bitches on the that that I, that I uh, that I need to do and and um, uh, Rick's gonna be my first intern. So, yes, sir. Uh, I will start yeah. in October. Hey, we'll y'all. Hear about more about it next week. It's about that time.
We're going to sweep the flows. We're going to clean the clippers. We're going to pour a drink. Todd, since you've been standing us up for the last fucking two months, you got the bathrooms. The shop is closed. Why is P on the floor? Get the out. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Same. Mr. Knight. <laughs> We're talking randomly.